I'm going to talk a bit about candles and the combustion that takes place there, because a lot of students don't quite understand what a candle is all about. So if you think about what actually is burning, with a candle. Most students would think it's the wick. Now, the wick does burn a bit, but it's actually mostly wax. We know that. And wax is a hydrocarbon. But it's not the wax in the solid state. That doesn't burn very well at all. The molecules are too packed together. They don't have access to the oxygen to react. And it's not even really the liquid that forms here around it. It's actually the gaseous wax, the wax vapors. And the role of the wick is to wick that liquid up through kind of a capillary action to the top of the wick where the heat of the flame vaporizes it. And once they're vaporized, they can react with the oxygen. And as they do so, they, of course, give off heat and light. And that heat goes into melting some more of the solid in the liquid, which then gets wicked up, and we have an ongoing cycle. A lot of neat chemistry just in a candle, but it's not the solid or even the liquid. Most things only burn in the gaseous form. So is it possible to burn a candle without the wick? Hmm. Let's find out. First thing I'm going to do, I've got a Ziploc bag here with a rubber stopper. I cut the corner off and taped a rubber stopper, one hold. And um, I've got a nail that's in there just to kind of plug it up. OK? And I'm going to pour in a little bit of hydrogen peroxide. Very carefully measured. <laughs> yeah, right. And a little bit of yeast, also very carefully measured. My point being here, it doesn't really matter the exact amounts. A little is good. More is better. OK? Try to get rid of most of the air that's in there before I zip it closed. OK? We got a nice little reaction going on there. And what reaction is that? It's the hydrogen peroxide decomposing into water and oxygen gas. The yeast is serving as a catalyst. Lots of things, by the way, can be used to catalyze that. It's just yeast is something that's fairly available. And I'm getting then some oxygen gas in here, which I'm going to use in a second. Now, the other thing I've got here, a plastic pipette with a large bulb to it and a rather thin stem. These are traditionally used for tie-dyeing. You want to have a large capacity and a rather thin stem. I actually pulled the tip out a bit and then cut it off. I guess if you got a close-up on that, you can see it's been tapered a bit. OK? And that's going to give me a nice, quick delivery of my oxygen gas. On the other end, I've got a test tube. It's got to be Pyrex, OK? And I'm going to put into that test tube a little bit of candle wax. And I'm just going to literally break off a piece here with my thumbnail, OK? Doesn't take much. So you can see how much candle wax I've got in there, OK? Now, we'll come back to that in a second. Meanwhile, I've generated enough oxygen, just as I've been talking here, certainly to do this demonstration probably 20 times. And um, here's the technique. I'm going to take off, take the nail out, squeeze the bulb to get rid of much of that air as possible, and stick that nozzle down into the, uh, into the stopper. Then release my grip here to draw up just a nice little bulb's worth of oxygen. Is that pure oxygen? No. I didn't get rid of all the air. Plus, there's water vapor in there. But it's good enough. It certainly is higher oxygen concentration than what we've got out here in the room which is just 20% oxygen, right? That's what air is. OK? And this will stay in there, especially because I've uh, tapered the tip there. This oxygen will stay in there for a while. So remember what I said. You know combustions between the fuel source and oxygen, but it doesn't burn very well in the, uh, in the solid state or even the liquid state. So I'm going to heat this up in this Bunsen burner. And this can be potentially loud, so I'm going to put these on. And I will tell you when it's going to be loud. But so here we go. Can you see the wax melting there in the flame? And now you can also see some vapors coming off as it boils. OK, here we go. I can take it out, 
put that in there and give it a quick squeeze. Okay, we've got a little combustion there. I'm going to set this down. We're going to try it one more time. Again, squeeze this. Oh, I've got to put it a little hard. Put that in there. Drop a fresh supply of oxygen there. Take that out. Stop it again. Uh, that little bit of wax is, is enough to do this many times over. Okay. The hotter you get the vapor, the better off you are. Okay. So here we go. No, not much there. A little bit there. Okay. So. That was an example of a candle burning without a wick. You got a little bit of pop noise at the end and the flame where the two could mix, but um, it's a nice example of uh, combustion and of kinetics because it didn't work with 20% oxygen. It's only going to be working with 100% or, I shouldn't say 100%, something higher concentration of oxygen than that. So, thank you very much.